Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the Holy Spirit come in this exact moment as you participate of this transmission. May He come upon you in order to open, to open your understanding and to give you discernment and understanding, understanding of what is needed to be done in order for you to change your situation, for you to change your life. This is it. Because the change of your life depends on you and on God. You do your part and He will do His. If you don't do your part, then He won't do His. That's how it works. Let me tell you something, and now you go straight to the point. And I know it doesn't always please the crowd, it usually doesn't. Yet, it's the truth that sets people free. And pay attention, please. Someone came to me and said like this, Bishop, I want to give my life to God. I've done everything. I've gone to the altar. I've done that. I've fasted. I've gave offerings and made sacrifices and this and that. Very well. Everything that you've done, has it worked? No, Bishop. Why hasn't it worked? What, what's wrong? And what is wrong is the following. It's your way of thinking. Because you think the following. If I give something material, which means to sacrifice an offering, to sacrifice my friends, if I do some things that are physical, then God will bless me with the Holy Spirit. But that's not how it is. He will bless you when you surrender yourself. And this surrender, my friend, to God is something that involves our identity, our character, our way of being. If we are living in the wrong way, then the first thing we have to do is to take a 180 degree turn. We have to change the direction we are going. If you don't do that, then nothing will happen. It's what John the Baptist would preach. The first thing he preached to us, repent. And Jesus came and said the same thing. What does it mean to repent though? To repent is for you to stop doing what is wrong. Repentance is not a feeling, is not remorse. Repentance is an attitude of faith. Attitude of faith. See what God said. He says like this, Let the wicked forsake his way. Which means, who can make the wicked live his ways? Can God take the person by force, by the neck, and put them in the right way? Now you have to go this way. No, he won't do that. It's the person that must decide to let their wickedness or their sin behind. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. You see, the thoughts that are evil must be left behind. Which means, if you want to surrender, if you want to have an encounter with God, to become a child of God, you have to forsake what you are doing wrong. This is an attitude of faith, of courage. So those people who get involved with you and they lead you to do what you shouldn't do, to do what is wrong, so you have to forsake those people and leave them aside. And you follow your own way of righteousness. This is repentance. And then he says, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man, his thoughts, let him return to the Lord. So we are seeing that exactly this here has been happening to very few people, very few people. And I can even remember now that 
in, in a certain prison, there was a guy who was sentenced to, I think, a hundred years in prison. A hundred years he was sentenced to, so he's never going to leave jail again. It's like a life sentence, in other words. However, he was so desperate and he had committed murder, he had robbed, he had done horrible things. Everything that you can imagine he did wrong. But there in jail, when he started to hear the word of God, he couldn't understand anything of the things of God. But he understood that he was doing what was wrong and he had to change. And everybody can understand that. You don't need to be religious to understand this. Because your own conscience says what you are doing wrong. And when your conscience accuses you of something wrong, then your faith is inactive. Your faith doesn't work. As long as you don't abandon what is wrong. So that prisoner said to himself, in a moment that everybody was asleep, he went to a dirty toilet and there he said, Oh my God, if you exist, if you truly exist, take me out of here and I will serve you for the rest of my life which means you take me out of this situation and I will serve you for the rest of my life. And what happened? This man was baptized in the Holy Spirit inside of the prison. In the prison, he received the Holy Spirit. He wasn't from a church or anything, but he appealed to the Most High and said, I repent, but please take me out of here. Take me out of this situation. And then what happened? After some time, he was released from jail. And then he got sad. Why? Because while he was in prison, he was giving his testimony to people. He was helping those who were in jail with him. And after he left, he was like, oh wow, now I no longer have the condition that I had to speak of Jesus to other people who are living what I lived. So, my friend, let's take this as an example. God says here, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and convert, return to the Lord. And to convert is the following. If you are walking towards north, you turn towards south. If you are going towards south and you want to convert, then you start going north. That's how it works. You go towards the opposite way that you are coming from. Because the way of sin leaves a stain in our conscience. And when the conscience accuses us, then the faith does not work. So it's even easy for a person to live in sin and to go up on the altar. Well, to go on the altar, anybody can go. Now, what God sees is not what is on the outside. It's not your body on the altar. What God sees is what is inside of you. If you sacrifice what is physical, the material, but you don't sacrifice the spiritual and the emotional, your interior, your sins, then you will never have an encounter with God. You never know the pure, holy God. He's holy. God is holy, pure. So how is he going to accept a person who remains in sin? How is the Spirit of the Almighty God will live, dwell inside of, of a mind that is full of filth, full of sins, and that enjoys sin, that enjoys what is wrong? You know what is wrong in your life. I don't have to be here making a list of what is seen and what is not. Because you know, everybody knows what is wrong. Our conscience accuses us straight away when we do something wrong. And we know what is right as well. If we do what is right, we have peace and therefore our faith is pure. If we do what is wrong, then our conscience accuses and we become doubtful. And doubt is what is leading people to hell. It's the 
evil doubt that is making people live hell here in this world. And later on, they will go indeed to hell. My dear friend, think, think the thoughts of God and apply them to your life and you are going to get rid of the situation. Let me tell you something. I was demon-possessed and I will speak of my own testimony. I used to go to spiritist centers. I consulted the mediums. I lived in sin. I was possessed by demons. I don't even know how many, but I had many demons. My thoughts were dirty. So, even though I was very young, I was living sin, deep into sin, until the day that I heard the Word of God, the Holy Scripture, the Word of Truth. And then, as I started hearing the Word, then I also started leaving my sins behind until it came to a point that I completely turned my back on my friends, on my girlfriends. I turned my back to everything that I liked. I went against my flesh, which meant I repented. And that's when I had an encounter with Jesus and the Holy Spirit came upon me. Why? Because he saw my effort, my supernatural effort. You know that the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is taken by force, by violence. So you have to go against your own self in order for you to enter the kingdom of God and to indeed become his child. Otherwise, nothing happens. And then your life will be unstable, up and down, up and down, up and down. And of course, always going down, going downwards rather than upwards. And, and that's why many people like this, including Christians, hypocrites, Pharisees, Jesus says concerning the Pharisees, the hypocrites, he speaks about the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And he tells his disciples, take heed, firstly, firstly, you who are my disciples and you are following me, beware of the hypocrites that speak, but they don't do what they're supposed to do who say this and that, they impose rules which they themselves don't follow. So, my dear friend, be transparent, be loyal, be truthful, truthful. Say to God everything that you are doing wrong and say to Him, Lord, I want you to get out of this life. I don't want this life of sleeping around, of stealing, this life of addictions. I don't want this anymore. I'm tired of this. Please, Help me, give me strength to make the right decision. And He will give you faith, the faith that you need in order for you to make a turn in your life of 180 degrees towards the right direction so you can live your wrong ways. You can live your wrong thoughts and then truly convert to the Lord Jesus because He will be merciful towards you. It's written, it's determined, and He will have mercy on you. Return to Him because He is merciful and He forgives. This is it. I have found forgiveness, and this ex-criminal found forgiveness in jail. He read the Bible there, which was given to him, distributed by the Rod Group, which is the work of the Universal Church in the prisons, and through the Word of God, he converted by himself. There was no prayer from the pastor, no prayer from the bishop, there was no altar, nothing, no church, nothing at all. But there, he had an encounter with the Almighty God, because God is seeking people like this, people who are sincere, transparent, 
people who are real and they say i made a mistake and i don't want to make up this mistake anymore i want to change etc 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 people who are truthful these people are the type of people god reach out to but those who sometimes go to church occupy a seat in the church and they think that because they are in church they are already pleasing god but outside of the church they do all sorts of wrong things that even even thinking what they do is already sinful so these people are hypocrites god does not listen god does not accept god hates hypocrisy so my friend that's why there is faith faith is the power faith is the courage is the boldness you take action regardless of what people you think the world do you think you become let's say inconsequent concerning the world but you become a person of god before him when you are transparent and you are sincere with him do that my friend by the way tomorrow we are going to have the lord's supper and you can make a vow with god in a universal church near you where we are going to have the lord's supper and you can have an encounter with god okay we are going to speak more about this but pay attention don't forget faith is not about religion faith is not to practice a religion faith faith is to take actions against your flesh and desires and your lust this is what faith is you do that that which is written what pleases god when you do what pleases god then god blesses you god blesses you he opens the windows of heaven upon your life because you become his child and that's when you just have to enjoy now that's it this is too great this is glorious this is magnificent let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return to the lord this is what repentance is and repentance i repeat is not a feeling of guilt repentance is an action of faith which you decide you determine no matter the price no matter the sacrifice you are going to do but you are going to forsake those mistakes because you want you want the best which is the spirit of god god bless you and i'll see you tomorrow in jesus name amen